Shtetl is the Yiddish word for town. Shtetl refers to the small market towns in pre-World War II Eastern Europe, towns with large Jewish, Yiddish-speaking populations. The shtetls of Europe, their wooden synagogues, and their Yiddish-speaking people are now only a distant memory. Our images of life in the shtetl come from music and art such as the show Fiddler on the Roof or the paintings of Marc Chagall. Slichot in the shtetl, the painting, is an homage to the tales told by my grandparents, immigrants from shtetls in Lithuania, Bessarabia, and White Russia. Grandma Jenny sang songs with Ladino melodies, spoke Yiddish, and had Sephardic ancestry. Sephardic and Ashkenazic Jews worldwide celebrate Slichot as they prepare for the high holidays. Let me share with you a story about Slichot and the shtetl as you view images of shtetl life. A young rabbi was traveling to spend Rosh Hashanah with his Reb father when he was stranded in a small shtetl over Shabbat. After Shabbat, the villagers retired to an early bed. Several minutes before midnight, the shamash began making his rounds with a lantern in one hand and a wooden mallet in the other, pounding on the shutters of each home and calling, Wake up! Wake up! The service of the Creator is about to start. All the villagers climbed out of bed, dressed swiftly, and hurried to the brightly lit synagogue. In the home of young rabbi's host, there was much confusion. The entire family had dressed and gathered at the door, prayer books in hand, ready to depart for the synagogue. But their rabbi guest had yet to emerge from his room. The host knocked softly on rabbi's door. There was no response. Slowly he entered the room. He found the young rabbi sound asleep. Reb, Reb, he urged, shaking his guest awake. Come quickly, slichot. The Reb's only response was to burrow more deeply under the covers. Hurry, Reb, his host persisted. They're about to begin in the synagogue any moment now. Begin what? asked the Reb, quite obviously annoyed. It's the middle of the night. Why are you waking me in the middle of the night? What's the matter with you, cried the villager. Tonight is Slichot. A fine Jew you are. Why, if I hadn't woken you, you would have slept through the entire Slichot. Slichot, asked the rabbi. What is Slichot? The Reb's host was amazed. Are you mocking me? Don't you know that today was the Shabbat before Rosh Hashanah? Every man, woman, and child of the village is now in the synagogue, trembling with anticipation. Soon the Baal Tefillah will begin chanting the Slichot prayers and the entire community will burst into tears, praying and begging God to bless them with a good year. So that's what this noise is all about, asked the young Reb. You're going to the synagogue to pray? What's so urgent that can't keep until morning? What do you pray for? Reb, I pray that the cow will give enough milk to keep my children healthy. I pray that my oats will get a good price in the market this year, for soon I will have a daughter to marry off. I pray that my horse will not break a leg, God forbid, as happened the year before last. The young Reb interrupted his host. Since when do grown men wake up in the middle of the night to ask for a bit of milk. The Reb wished to impress upon his host that there is more to preparing for Rosh Hashanah than praying to God for one's material needs. Rosh Hashanah is the day on which we proclaim God King of the Universe and commit ourselves to obey and serve Him. It is a time for teshuva, for repenting for one's sins and failings and resolving never to repeat them. Is this the time to approach God with a shopping list of our material needs? This story of Slichot and the Shtetl, just told, is a moral tale. The painting Slichot and the Shtetl attempts to capture the joy and charismatic quality of believers in prayer, singing and dancing in preparation for the high holidays. <laughs>